Firstly, let me introduce myself. Who am I? And why am I talking about note taking? And so this is Ece. That's a weird name. Uh, it's a, a Turkish name, actually. And like I have a PhD uh, in international relations from Stockholm University. I graduated last year. Uh, but apart from my PhD, I also have like a dual role. Uh, I like I'm one of the co-founders and also I'm the CEO of this uh, tool that's called Squintle. And now you're looking at Squintle actually. And today I will be uh, talking to you about note taking. What is that Alcasta and how can we take better research notes? And I will be doing my presentation within the tool. So you will both be like uh, learning about this method and also learning about Squintle at the same time. And what is Scrantle? You're looking at it right now. Uh, we call it as like, it's as if a combination between these online whiteboards, these uh, like digital uh, white spaces uh, with a document editor, basically. So it's a fully flexible place where you can spread all your notes and documents and work with them visually. And if you have any questions about myself and also the tool, uh, you can like easily say hi to me on Twitter. You can find me with like edit things or Daniela will be sending you a link to our community. We have a Scrantle community and there is uh, 1,200 people there. Uh, so you can just join and ping me and I'm going to answer any questions. So let's start with my presentation. So in this webinar, like why I decided uh, note taking, like how it came to my mind was that uh, when I was doing my PhD, we were always talking about stress. Like we were always talking about research and stress as if there are synonymous words. And why are we so stressed actually with the research? And I realized that it's all about writing. So we all have like this anxiety that we need to write a new paper. And it's always a big anxiety because we always feel like we're starting from a blank page. So when I was a student, when I was like trying to read on uh, like writing materials, like how can I write better? I was feeling like it's always like the books focus on two things. One formal requirements about writing or more like psychological help, how we can keep the deadlines and how you can get things done. But I realized like we were not talking so much about what we can do so that we do not start from a blank page when we are writing a new article. So basically, this is the main question of this webinar, what we can do differently in the months or weeks before we face the blank page anxiety. And actually, the answer or like the solution to it is quite simple. The so I found the solution in note making. And I found the solution in this uh, method of note making that's called Zetalkasta. And that's what I will be uh, presenting to you today, actually. And let's go into what is Zetal Kastan. So Zetal Kastan is uh, like we call it as a it's a personal knowledge management method actually that uh, you achieve through note making. And it's a weird word. It's a German word. And apparently, like Zetal means cards, and Zetal Kastan means box of cards. And it was like originally uh, like developed by. Uh, a researcher like ourselves uh, by Niklas Luhmann. He is like known as the founding father of this method. And why it became like so famous is that like probably Luhmann was also like became quite famous in his uh, like ecosystem because he was known to be overly productive. Like he published nearly 60 books and over 600 articles before he passed away. And when he passed away, he had many unfinished manuscripts as well. And when he was asked about like, how can you be this productive? He was always referring to his note making method. He was saying that he was never starting from a blank page. He always had a companion and the companion was his notes. So uh, what is this system like? We will go into what are the founding pillars of this system. And then uh, there are some steps to achieve that Holkastan. And we will go over those steps one by one uh, with me showing examples of you, like how the steps can be done. And in the end, like if you have any questions about like this tool or about that Holkastan, I'm more than happy to answer. So Zetal Kastan apparently is like founded on four pillars. So the first uh, pillar is to build a web of personal knowledge. 
So like the aim is actually create a personal Google. We are all reading too much or like listening and watching too much. And just like imagine uh, as if your mind was Google, uh, your own Google, and you could just search for the things that you're thinking about or you've been reading about. Because the problem is always that we read things and then we forget and they never, they are never fed into our articles actually. So that's like the aim to create a web of knowledge. And then how we can uh, do this is like the another pillar is to find connections among topics. So our aim in this note making method will be that we are creating our personal knowledge base by creating connections between our ideas and our topics. And why are we doing this actually? Uh, like uh, so that we can retrieve the right memory whenever we need it. And always the end goal is that we turn even this like fleeting ideas into solid, uh, more uh, solid ideas and arguments in the end. So that we have a box of solid arguments that we can refer to whenever we are writing something new and we can use it in our next research. So that's kind of like the uh, whole aim of the system. Okay, so firstly, we will go about the steps. So in Zetel Kasten, there are actually four different steps. And it sounds like, I know it's a weird name. It might sound like, okay, what is this new method? But actually doing this is pretty simple. And it's just like made out of uh, four different steps. So the first step is called make fleeting notes. So make like uh, the trivial small notes. So this method tells us that uh, our aim should be to capture any idea that pops into our mind during the day. So, and those can be, for example, um, like I need to read this book or it can be, oh, can there be a, a connection between let's say violence and Gini coefficient? That's an interesting idea. Maybe an idea like that pops into your mind. And this method tells you that you should be writing that, that down if an idea pops into your mind. And in that writing, uh, how you should be doing it is that it shouldn't cause any distractions. Uh, so you should be writing the moment it comes to your mind and without caring so much about the system. So let's say that you're using like Scrintle or Mandalay or OneNote and like you're on the train, the idea comes to your mind. Uh, so it says that even if you can write on a piece of paper or on a piece of napkin, that's totally fine. So the only thing is to put those ideas down without losing them. So don't care so much about where to put them. But yeah, so for example, uh, ideas like I should check this book or can there be a cor uh, correlation? Just They just need to be written down. And then what we will do is that uh, in a day or two, uh, we will go back to those ideas. We will read about, for example, this idea. Can there be a correlation between the two? And we will either take an action about that idea. So for example, we will either read more on this uh, and uh, develop that idea. Or if we feel like that's a fleeting note that it was just an idea and it came and went and it's not so important for you right now, you can even like delete them or you can have like a separate place that you're putting them and uh, you will keep on <laughs> living your life. So the whole idea is that you take fleeting notes and revisit them in one, two days and uh, take out the ones that is interesting and that's gonna be useful for you in that day. Okay, and let's say that, okay, you took the fleeting notes and what's the next step? Let's say that you found an interesting research idea, then, uh, in research, as you have an idea, you usually need to read something, right, to develop that idea. So then the second step comes as making literature notes. So if you have a research idea, then you will probably keep on uh, like reading about that. And when you're reading, you should be taking literature notes. So that's uh, like one of the most important parts of Zetal Kassan, actually. And these literature notes, which I'm going to show you the examples of them right now, uh, how they can be is that uh, like they should be kept actually very short and you should be extremely selective about not copy pasting everything that you're reading, but it should be used in your own words. It should be your own summary. 
and uh, but obviously you should be uh, like keeping the biblio um, like the uh, article details or the book details uh, together with these notes so that you can go back to the source so let's look at for example uh, these so for example here like these are some uh, examples of uh, literature notes uh, so like Scrantle works super uh, visually. Uh, so these are like this yellow and the white things are, I call them cards. And we can make them look like a mind map like this, or with one click, we can uh, make them into a full page and keep on writing. But the nice thing is that you can really move them uh, on the whiteboard and arrange them visually to make sense to your brain basically. Okay. So, for example, I was reading uh, this uh, article and I kept like the full uh, reference here. And then I even like put the PDF because that's uh, what you can do in Scrantle cards. You can just drag and drop the PDFs. And then by clicking here, you can simply extract the PDFs and I can just make them bigger. And you can keep on reading the PDF while you're taking the literature note. Uh, so it gives you the uh, ability to put PDFs there. And in these literature notes, these are my literature notes, you can see that I tried to keep one idea per card. So for example, this note is a, called like policy scope and it explains what a policy scope is. And it does not contain anything more. So this is like a, a quite core uh, concept of the method that when you're taking uh, these notes, like the literature notes and then permanent notes, you should be keeping one idea per one note card. And the only aim uh, for this, like why are we doing this, is all about searchability. So that uh, if we keep like one idea per card, it's going to be so much easier to find our individual ideas and to reuse them uh, in this next project or in the upcoming projects. For example, if I was if I were to put like policy scope, uh, like international governance, formal and informal argument, and what like what the concept contract mean in one linear word doc, let's say, uh, I would be losing this overview. I would like the words, the ideas would just be lost in this full linear document. But what I'm trying to do is like to keep one idea per card. And that's a very difficult thing to do actually, because it's very difficult to know where does an idea end and where the next one begins. So it's quite like criticized concept uh, actually. Uh, but especially when you're reading the literature, it's uh, such a good thing to do. And this is like, for example, um, my like uh, key takeaways from this article. I was writing like the argument and also like the core concepts. And this was like a different article. So I was giving like the color uh, yellow to the sources. And then uh, again, I was writing like definition of delegation and the aim of delegation and definition of pooling from this article. And you're also seeing like some um, like uh, arrows here. And I, I will later on like delve into what does these arrow mean. Uh, but basically, if you're, um, I saw that there are many Obsidian and Rome research users. Uh, so in Squintle, you can create these bi-directional links. So for example, if you are uh, open a new card, and let's say that this card is a source card. So I just copy paste it basically like the PDF or the source. And then you can simply like give links to the other ideas that you have. For example, um, you can simply write in the notes. This is about, let's say contract here. Just press plus and then write contract. And the program will be searching for uh, all the cards in your archive uh, titled contact and it's going to create uh, the links and they're both visual links and also can be seen here and this is super useful uh, because if you land into this source then you can easily find like the concepts they're on uh, separate cards and you can easily find that okay this is about this so that like you find an entry point and you delve into your own web of knowledge. This is actually what it means to create a web of knowledge, creating these uh, ideas. And this was, for example, like another uh, example of another article that I was reading. 
And here you can see that uh, for each explanatory factor within the article, I created a separate card uh, about like all the explanatory factors. And I gave, it, gave this visuality because it was working for my brain. If it's not working for you, you can totally do something else, for example. Like to me, it was like explanatory that there are explanatory factors and there are these three of them and I can just uh, visually organize how they look basically. Okay, so this was the uh, literature notes. And then the next step, and the next step is where many people I think get stuck is, okay, you took literature notes and what to do next? And the next step is turning these literature notes, these reading notes into permanent notes. And that's actually like, we call it the final step because the fourth step is just uh, like creating the loop actually. So you turn these literature notes into permanent notes and the permanent notes should be uh, again, like cards uh, written in a very concise way uh, that they are written in such an understandable way as if you're talking to somebody else. And they, those are notes and or those are arguments actually that they will never be thrown away and they contain the necessary information in itself. So anybody who reads a small permanent note know better like how small it is, they should be understanding the idea behind it. And here, like uh, things we should consider when we're making permanent notes is like, obviously, OK, how are we going to make this? There is so uh, like it sounds very easy to say, OK, make permanent notes, but how? And how they are, they should be made uh, is also like quite similar to literature notes that we should be writing again one idea per card and write as if you're some writing for somebody else. And there we're using always like full sentences, disclose our sources, make references and be uh, super uh, brief and precise. And when you're in the permanent note stage, let's say that uh, you started from this idea, like is there any correlation between violence and Gini coefficient? That was a fleeting note. And then I started reading on them and I created literature notes. It's basically a combination and a, like a some combination of what the authors write and also what I think and a summary of that reading. And then if I come to the stage of permanent notes, uh, you can basically delete or get rid of all those, read this book, or can there be a correlation type of fleeting notes in your system just to clean it up. And now we will like look into what are permanent notes and uh, what are the examples of them. And then the next step would be how to store them actually. Okay, so here we saw that uh, like I was reading uh, three different sources and I was like doing these to write uh, my literature review actually. And I was like taking notes of different concepts, how the author is like describing that concept and also some explanatory factors. Okay, but what now? So now I should be like having some uh, like more concrete ideas or arguments of my own. And for example, uh, like measuring the authority of international organizations is a complex task as there are many, there are multiple variables involved. For example, this is just one sentence and it can be like a starting sentence of your literature review, or it's basically my observation. And this is like as simple as it looks, but this can be an example of your permanent note because at this stage, I was able to create some ideas on uh, like how uh, I can talk about measuring authority. And the nice thing here, like you can see that I gave a different color to my uh, permanent notes, just to separate it in my brain, I make them um, blue. And you can say that if I click uh, once on a permanent note, the arrows are showing me uh, where, from where, like which paper these ideas are originated from. So if I click here, you can see that all the other cards are blurred and this article is more highlighted because I kind of like generated this idea, like argument uh, when I was reading this uh, note, that this article, sorry. And then I created like a different uh, 
permanent node. And you can see that again, if I click here, I can move the card like this to see uh, the connections. If I click once here, uh, you can see that I gathered this idea uh, when I was reading the explanatory factor of this article and another concept of this article. So by like, um, like putting basically like the sources and the main arguments of a couple of articles in one visual board and by keeping my permanent notes uh, in the same uh, visual board I can just click on them and see where the idea is originating and that's like same for this one I can move them around in the way that I want and I can basically see how it's uh, like how I gathered this idea from uh, definition of pooling and how it can be an idea for my paper five, for example. Yes, so these are uh, later on, uh, I was like coming up with uh, feature ideas and questions for my project. And I was keeping them as my like, something between permanent notes and my writing notes, basically. Um, so later on, after I create this permanent notes, what I do, I start like drafting uh, my article. And I try to keep them actually in one visual board, um, like all these different uh, drafting steps and all these permanent notes so that I see where like the ideas are originating. Okay, but now let's look at like how to store these permanent notes and then uh, we can uh, further delve into uh, basically how we can like make different boards out of these notes if we ever need to. Okay, so uh, creating them is obviously like one thing, but also storing them in your archive is a different thing. Uh, because as you remember, like the, one of the pillars of Zetal Kastan is that you should be able to retrieve this information, right? So th this information should be searchable and it should be retrievable by you. And we always rely either on like this search keywords or our own memory. Uh, so the method tells us that we should give as many entry points to a card. So um, like an argument per se, as we can. And how we can give these entry notes is like, if that idea is originating from, let's say a different paper, uh, give as many like links as possible to different sources so that when you land onto that source, you can uh, find your main argument there as well. And also like one of the most important things is that, uh, let me go here actually, uh, is that like finding the right keywords for the article, uh, for the card titles or for the card content. Uh, so that's also like really helps you when you're searching. So when you create a permanent note, uh, you shouldn't be thinking of it like uh, where it fits. Like you shouldn't be sometimes like just using the article's title uh, when you're titling a permanent note, but it should be more in terms of uh, where is this idea fitting in my case. So for example, if it's fitting uh, for the introduction part of your paper five, you should be titling it introduction for paper, my paper five, for example. If it's fitting, um, I don't know, your conclusion, you should either be like tagging it as conclusion or like renaming the title as conclusion so that you can really find and reuse it. So we should always be looking at uh, when and how will I be using this idea and tag and also like rename the title accordingly, rather than simply copy pasting the title of the article, because it's always too long and we never remember like where to find things later on. And yeah, so in the end, like this is also a very like uh, important uh, like step. Whenever you add a new permanent note to your system, you should be try to like make these connections uh, in terms of like how this idea is fitting into something that I already know. So for example, let's go here and let's have, yeah, I can open this as well. So for example, you can really write things that, uh, here I was talking about measuring authority is a complex task, right? And 
and how does this fit in my knowledge system? Like, did I have any other different arguments related to this one before? So you can totally write things that uh, this is possibly contradicting with and plus. Um, yeah, for example, this is possibly contradicting with this and this idea is supporting, um, for example, delegation and pooling article. So by like really not just writing the argument, uh, but also writing the source and also saying how this argument is contradicting to other permanent nodes in your system, or how is it supporting to other nodes in your system, can really help you because think of it like this I will be finding this note five years later <laughs> five years after this uh, webinar for example and if this note is like well connected to the others in my system then I can really see uh, like where it's standing in my system and it's gonna give me more gateways to more notes so I will not be losing my arguments uh, my arguments will be well connected with each other yeah, so that's like the most difficult part, uh, but that's a very important part, actually. And in the writing process, uh, like what we can do is like these permanent notes, like, as you write them, they really become like the uh, plot or the skeleton of your next article. Uh, so you can simply like turn them into your article. You don't need to just copy paste them. Sometimes you need to translate the cards into a rough draft, uh, but they become a really good um, starting point for you, basically. And very usually like what I like uh, to do if if is I'm like uh, if I'm reading on a topic, I usually create a like a board out of it and I put like the source cards there for each source. And then I start uh, like taking my literature notes, uh, always like outlining the different uh, concepts, how they define it and different like explanatory factors, like what are the different factors. And I try to write like this explanatory factor, for example, contradicts with uh, this concept so that when I click on that concept, I can really see uh, how the arrows are connected across different ideas, across sources. And then I try to keep my permanent notes sometimes in the same board. Uh, but if I'm then if I'm moving to uh, like writing the article part, then I can simply say uh, create a board. So then I create a new board uh, only out of these cards. And I can say um, permanent notes for article five, for example. And I can keep on uh, developing these notes. And the nice thing uh, in Sprintle is that like these boards, they're just visual. Uh, so it's a visual representation of the same information. So this card, for example, now uh, you will see that it appears in two different boards. It appears in Zetel Kastan board and this one. Uh, so any change that I make in these cards, in these permanent notes will be reflected across the boards and like why this is nice is that uh, I can keep the same information but if this is like uh, my article writing process if I want to give a different visuality to the same information I can do so for example I can just create a table and I can write um, let's say like introduction and then let's write another column uh, let's say conclusion And I can simply like drag and drop these cards. So in this board, my mind will be working like this. My mind like wants to see uh, which arguments will go into my introduction and which arguments will go into my conclusion, for example. Yeah, and this is a separate board, but still, as I said, like these cards are connected to the rest of my uh, literature notes. So I can move uh, this one here if I want to. And I kind of gave a new visuality to the same information, right? And as I said, like, um, if I want to just focus on writing, I can totally do so in this like uh, focused writing mode. And I can like open uh, 
these links, the, the other linked notes on the sidebar. So that if I want to uh, read from one note and write on the other hand, I can do that. And I can just quickly like uh, change the places of the notes. Yeah, so it's all about like how your brain works. It's all about the visuality and giving the like different visuality to the same information. And when you're, some people are also like writing even uh, much fuller documents in Squintle. So just, I think this question might come. And if you feel like uh, you want to export things, uh, when you're done, you can export things as a PDF or as a markdown. Uh, so you can, like if you want to export and keep on writing somewhere else, you can do so uh, as well. So it's a tool that's all about like visually synthesizing the information that you know. And uh, it works, I think, the best if you try to keep the Zettelkasten method, if you try to write like one idea per note, because cards look quite small on the uh, board. So if you write like one idea and also keep the main argument as the title, I think it works really well for your brain. So that if you're going to structure a, a course, a structure a, like a seminar a, or structure an article, you can really see how things are going. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop here uh, because you will probably have many questions and we have 20 minutes left. And I'm very ready to have uh, your questions and answer them. Great, thanks, thanks so much, Eche. So we'll we'll go. I'll pick I'll pick some of the questions. We do have uh, quite a bit. So um, let's start with some of the the more kind of uh, I don't know theoretical. <laughs> I would say. Um, is so so um Shazwani is saying that um you know like the purpose of creating notes is for thesis writing so it can be really overwhelming when you accumulate quite a lot I mean obviously this is what you have is visual but um I mean and from your experience if you felt this way how how do you deal with it and how how do you use screen to um uh, to to make you like feel more comfortable after you've accumulated I don't know like hundreds of them yeah so like i obviously i have thousands of them uh in my archive and this one is not my like uh, personal archive <laughs> i'm using a different account like just for presentation purposes basically and how i was uh, like really feeling okay about things was that uh yes you collect hundreds or like thousands of them and that's okay and that's what should happen i think the worst is like if you do not collect any notes uh, because it means you were just you came up with so many different ideas and you just forgot them and I think that's worse and how I kind of like get over uh, that anxiety is like really reviewing the notes picking up the most important ones and in terms of the important ones I really try to use colors I color code things and then I try using hashtags so that I can uh for example, I can even create like an important hashtag so that when I click uh, the hashtag, my archive will open and will show me every other card that's tagged as important. Uh, so I try to cluster things under hashtags and under boards. And sometimes you can really make meta boards as well. So I had even, um, for example, for my PhD, um, how do you call it in English? Like uh, for my PhD defense, like in Sweden, we have uh, two, three hour defenses and you're supposed to defend like your whole thesis in front of a whole crowd. Uh, so I really reviewed the whole thesis, really reviewed, like uh, made a whole board of the whole thesis and picked up like the important parts and made like these uh, small Kanban boards uh, out of them. I was like uh, reusing my notes into saying like, Edda, please do not forget this and putting all <laughs> the uh, titles. So it was really like uh, calming me uh, to see the titles actually as like uh, all the titles are including like the main argument. Uh, so even though it's a full document, I can really see what I should be telling uh, right. in that context, for example. So so like rather than like rereading your thesis and then synthesizing your thesis, you already have that in your notes and you kind of pick up the- Exactly, the exactly, things. exactly. 
Um, cool. So in terms of, um, there's a question which I now lost, but there's a question around uh, what happens. So like once you have like permanent notes, um, do they do they move into literature notes or fleeting notes? I think uh, maybe can you go over like very briefly as to the process, like when when you start what and then what converts to what? Yeah, of course. Uh, so basically a fleeting note, uh, for example, like I should be um, like reading this or can there be a correlation? Uh, you should just take them and you should revisit them in one or two days to see if it's relevant still or if it was just a crazy idea that popped in your head. If it's not relevant uh, to whatever you are doing, you can totally delete those fleeting notes and just get rid of them because if you're not going to work on them again if you will work on them you will probably be reading more about that uh, note so they will be converting into a literature note because you will be reading on that topic and taking uh, reading notes and uh, the reading notes should really turn into permanent notes because these are like the building lego blocks of your next article and those are like very simple arguments uh, that you write in your own words, that you uh, try to link and connect with the other permanent notes as much as possible uh, in your system, uh, because then these will turn into your, uh, as I said, yeah, writing blocks, basically. So, so, so essentially, literature notes, notes are not like you take where, where when, when you read the literature, the literature that summarize the literature, the literature and then, and then taking notes of like whatever, whatever comes to mind, mind like that maybe your idea, idea or your or perfect perfect something and so on. And then, and then permanent, permanent notes are, are what, what, what you then, then write, write as more, a bit more robustly than, than, than sort of like the summary or the idea that pop my mind. Uh, I heard you in with a really big echo, actually. Oh, I, hope sorry. It, I hope it was just me. Uh, so I was able to understand. I, I, I just, I just, I just summarize. We'll go, we'll go, let's go, go to, to the, the next, next uh, question. question. So, so um, um, there's, there's a question, question around how, how, um, um, how screen sound sounds different from your sound sample. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, and um, can you hear me well? Like there is no echo, right? And can you speak, uh, Daniela? Yes. yes. Can you hear me? hear me? Unfortunately, with such a big echo. Can you can you hear me now? Is it better? Yeah, okay, great. So there was a question around how Scrintal is similar or different from Miro. Yes, perfect. Uh, so the first, there are quite some differences. And the first difference is one of them is that these are not just post-it notes as in Miro, uh, but you can turn them into a fully fetched document and you can embed anything that you want to embed. For example, uh, like PDFs or YouTube videos or tweets, and you can just extract them out. Uh, so one, the first difference or like the easiest difference is that uh, it's not just post-it, but it's a fully fetched document. And the more like I think the better or like the bigger difference is that uh, these notes, we have a full like uh, like a global search and an archive that uh, Miro or uh, any other visual tool that do not have basically. So for example, in this archive, I can search the archive with the spotlight or I can search the archive here as well. Uh, so all the cards that I create, all of these uh, small cards that you see live in my archive. And that's like such a big difference. And I can just select any one of them that I like, or I can just search any one that I like. And with one click, I can just drop it uh, to my desk. So basically the difference is that your ideas are not stuck uh, into non-searchable like post-it notes, but they can be extended into documents that are fully findable and reusable across the boards and across the projects. Great. 
two also technical questions. One is how or can you add links? How do you add links? And the other, can you export to Microsoft Word? Okay, so in links, I guess they are asking about URL uh, links. Uh, yeah, yes, you can uh, simply add like URL links. Uh, you can just do this or like you can simply, uh, if you click on a, a word or a sentence, and if you just paste the link on a word, it's going to add the link. So it's that simple. And if you can uh, export it to Microsoft Word, right now it's only to Markdown uh, and also PDF, but exporting to Microsoft Word will also come. We will work on like many more different export formats. Great. And how about like uh, referencing and integrations with things like Zotero? And yeah, and that's a question that always comes uh, from academics. And right now we do not have uh, integration from Mand with Mandalay, Zotero or like referencing uh, tools, but we will, we just released the platform today actually. Uh, we will look at the, um, uh, the amount of those requests that's coming in. And then we will like prioritize when to develop that. Uh, because we think kind of thing that it's in the roadmap and it's gonna come like in over a year, but we don't know yet. And yeah, the amount of usage from academia and also like uh, the feature requests will determine when we will prioritize it. Cool. And there are questions around um, around kind of like, is it web based or where where your information <laughs> is it saved? Yeah, perfect. So it's cloud based, yes. Uh, so what I'm showing you right now is our Mac app. Uh, so we work on every browser, uh, like we don't work so well on uh, Edge and for like we work the best on Chrome and uh, Safari, but we work basically on every browser and you can download our um, non-native Mac and Windows desktop apps uh, right now. And it's fully collaborative. That's what we wanted to do. That's why we store the uh, data in cloud and we use like Amazon's uh, like S3 and AWS servers uh, with, that are within uh, Europe. Uh, we are a company based in Stockholm. And also like I started developing this uh, when I was still doing my PhD. So we really used the um, uh, GDPR compliance system of Stockholm University. And also like the, we got help from the lawyers of the university when we were writing the privacy and the terms of use. Uh, Amazing. And and so like um is is there a way to add handwritten note either directly um from an iPad or pencil import from good goods? Um some people tend to take handwritten notes on devices. Is that possible? Yeah, so uh, for the iPad, we don't have the like native iPad app yet, but what you can do, you can open a scrantle on the iPad browser. And then uh, you can simply like uh, use your pencil, iPad pencil, and you can like open a note. And if with the pencil, you can keep on writing the, your handwritten notes. And the iPad, you know, like has the uh, built-in functionality to turn them into uh, uh, notes like this. Uh, so you can directly work on the iPad. And what else you can do from the good notes or anything else? You can simply like uh, export them uh, as like in uh, in an image format. And you can, if you want, like import the just like copy paste the images here if you want. That's also another way of doing it. Great. Um, so there are questions around um, access and whether, what, so right now, obviously you have to sign up to use it and uh, people are asking whether um, you're thinking of like a freemium model or anything like that. Yeah, so uh, we're like a very new app and today we just released our early access plan because we have uh, around like 33,000 waitlisters. And that's a huge number. And they were like really asking us to get access. So we just wanted to also like really develop the app with their uh, like feedback. And we just 
like open it up to early access. And it's basically if you're an individual and if you want to use it right now, even like right now, I don't want to wait. Uh, you pay like uh, five dollar a month that's built annually and you get the immediate access now. And that's price, as I said, is just for like one year. But if you're in uh, like the first two thousand subscribers, you will get to lock that price forever. And that's for if you're an individual and if you want to use it now. And we want to publicly launch, open up, uh, like get rid of the wait list uh, in Q2 of 2023. And that time we will have a freemium. So we will have a free version, a personal pro and a team uh, pricing. So if you don't want to pay at all, you can uh, join the wait list and wait until Q2. And if you're a team, so as I said, like everything is working fully collaboratively and you can even like see each other's arrows on the board. So if you have a research uh, team and you want to use it as a team and give us feedback, uh, then please come to our uh, website. I think Daniela will uh, share the link. Then there is like, um, I'm a team and I want to apply for a better test uh, option. Uh, there is a, like a survey, you fill the survey, we review them and we open free accounts for your team in exchange for feedback because that's what we really value. So, okay, so uh, that actually a great thing because there, there's some question around using it collaboratively and we had some questions sent in advance uh, where some people wanted to use it with their, um, either with their uh, PhD students, so as a supervisor or uh, with like a, the, the, their graduate students or in a course. Can you tell a little bit more about what the features are? Yeah, so you can use like, uh, there's live collaboration even now. And what you can do for sharing, you have a couple options. One, you can share um, uh, like individual cards. And how you can do it is basically just come here, share card and write the email uh, of that person. And that's full, fully shared with them. And you can, uh, when that person is like, active in this uh, card, you can see their cursor and where they're changing life. Or you can share a whole board with your uh, PhD students, for example. Then you just share it here. Yeah, we share it with multiple people. Uh, so you just come here and then write the email of that person and that person gets access to the whole board, like all the cards in that board. And when that person is on the board, you can uh, see where they are uh, and you can follow their location. And that's like one option to fully collaborate, uh, but also like, you can use it individually as well, but still you might want to share this board like uh, in a read-only format to a non-screental user, for example. And then you can simply share this URL with them and then they will just get access to this board in a read-only uh, format. Awesome, thank you. So another question that uh, kind of builds up on the one we asked. Um, so Dan is saying that there are situations where a bevy of resources overlap. The notes abducted from these resources are used in two different search or writing projects. How does Scrintel manage to aggregate these notes in such a way that the sets of notes are sorted up for each research project? <laughs> Okay, so as I uh, understand the question, like uh, for different uh, like projects, the notes are basically aggregated or uh, kept into uh, different places. And how does Scrintel uh, synthesize these? Did I get it right? I believe that what, like say, as a reading, right? You might be reading things for one research project, but but some notes might be useful for others or for another research project, for both research projects. So how do you kind of like deal with that? Yeah, okay, perfect. And that's like, that's a great question. And that's what we want, like, that's what how we wanted to build the system. Like, uh, that's basically the whole idea behind the system. Uh, because we felt that um, that segregation is very much coming from the folder structure of many tools that we're using. So we always like start with a folder for one, uh, like project, and we keep the ideas there. And how we are trying to do it is actually like by keeping one idea per cart, then you make these carts Lego blocks. 
that can be used to build another castle, actually. So uh, how you can reach to this Lego block is, again, by, um, like, you can tag it with, like, a different uh, tag. Like, you can tag it with, like, different concept names or different, um, like, different topic names. Uh, so that whenever you feel like you need to refer to that topic, but in a different project, uh, you can simply search for that tag in your archive, for example, let's say article writing, and these are like all my Lego blocks that's about this topic, like article writing, and I can really like uh, quickly uh, take a sneak peek into what these cards or what these ideas are telling me before even I bring them to my board. Uh, but then if I feel like, okay, this is important, I might want this uh, in this project, I just drag and drop and bring it to my board. And like this visuality, again, like, uh, like gives me the uh, possibility to create a new narrative for my new project. And if I don't want these cards here, for example, I simply select them. Uh, which I will do now. I just select them and send them back to my archive, but they, they are still alive. So by, create, by using the tags, not having a folder structure, by keeping just one global archive and retrieving any card from that archive uh, is kind of like our answer to that. Excellent. So there is a, a number of questions. Okay, last we have three minutes left. So last question, maybe I'll try to aggregate a few of them into one. Um, so are th there are questions around how this compares with kind of like qualitative research, thematic analysis, and um, also like existing kind of qualitative analysis tools, Atlas TI and and Envivo. So can, can you like, do you have any ideas or, or can you tell us a little bit of how maybe either screen talking for thematic analysis or for, for research or how this differs uh, or for you better better literature reviews let's say uh, using other other qualitative analysis applications okay so basically like um i think when we talk about these uh like uh, qualitative analysis tools uh, i think many people use it for two different use cases one of them is like uh, organizing the literature and doing lit like uh, literature reviews and two is like doing the actual analysis, like doing the, uh, so to say, coding part. And if your use case is the second one, uh, for example, I created a new, like a qualitative database, like reading thousands of uh, annual reports of international organizations. There, obviously, you can't use Sprintle. Like you should be using a qualitative analysis tool uh, because I, I was really like coding line by line. And then I wanted to retrieve uh, all those codes, how many times they're occurring like across the different papers. And that's like a totally different use case. But then I tried like those uh, qualitative analysis tools for the literature reviews. And there uh, I found it like as like quite difficult to manage. Because whenever like you're reading uh, something new, you start to have a different idea and the whole uh, way turns into this. Whenever you have an idea, you start having a new code. And in the end, you have like hundreds of codes that you're not using and it becomes a mess. Uh, so if you want to like read the literature and also take the literature notes, uh, I think Sprintle is like so much more flexible. Uh, because you're not really creating different codes, but you're creating different nodes. And the nodes, uh, it can be thousands of them, but it doesn't really create a clutter uh, because the whole aim is to have thousand nodes so that you can retrieve them. Uh, if, if I'm like making myself clear a little bit. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for showing screen tell work and also answering uh, all the questions we don't have <laughs> left. Uh, so what we'll try and do, yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, sound, like, I'll send some of them to you and you can answer them to in, in the blog. Uh, and yes, recording will be distributed. Uh, we'll post it up 
on our ocean site and you will through all links for the community and also signing up to screen tell. and if you have any questions reach out to us and we'll we'll try to help you out thank you again and everyone have a lovely rest of the day bye bye bye